these miracles of these voyagers that started to discover all these islands. It's like the eighth wonder of the world. How did they do that so far back in time? There was two things of genius in Polynesia. Someone needed to build a vehicle, a spaceship of our ancestors that could sail far, when no other culture on the earth was sailing far. The other is you had to navigate to find a way to and from. The navigator needed to be able to see, it needed to be able to hear, it needed to be able to feel. Every day that navigator would, maybe making 5,000 observations of a wave or a bird or a star, it would make 500 choices about trim, course, steering, and then it would make two decisions. At sunrise and sunset, in the color of light of dawn and dusk, it would make decisions about where are you on the earth. I think we are where we are on the planet today where human beings are changing the earth. It is now turning around and changing us and we don't know what to do because we disconnected. The greatest thing we need to do is become family of the earth again, family of nature. The greatest naturalist I've ever met was my teacher, Mao Piai, who transcends the observation of nature to what he calls the magic. It is about when the human existence becomes part of the family of nature, that you are nature. The thing about Mao, the day he was leaving, packing his bag, he sat me down and said, okay, and I know I give you everything, um, and the ocean showed you everything, but it'll be 28 years before you'll see. If you want someone to know everything, send your son, because you're too old. That's a crucial piece of cracking the code. And it's when we teach our children. When do you learn the connection? When do we learn verbal language? When do we learn the language of nature? And that's the language we, we need to immerse ourselves. We need to bring it back. We need schools of, of nature immersion globally. And that's why we're voyaging. To just getting general awareness to half the population of the Earth getting understanding to a quarter population of the earth and getting the sense of values back to a billion people. And then going down the road from values, you need to reinstate respect. Then you need to reinstate care. And then from there, where values are now moving to action, that's when you need to help strengthen a community and a culture that's global, not based on race, but based on values. Hokulea takes us into the wild. The voyage itself will take about 400 crew members from, we're hoping, about 26 countries. Diversity and equity and access matters. That this is not just a Hawaiian voyage, this is a global voyage. We'll be at sea for about 450 days and we'll be on land for 950 days. Every day is a story of ideas and people. You cannot make this movement by yourself. You have to have communications and education platforms that can get it to the billions. And then you need to have partners that are gonna essentially strengthen the stories, help us to access communities. We will go to indigenous territories and communities to make sure that these people have voice. Kalea, Hikanalia will do its part. It won't do it by itself. You need the platforms and you need the partners. And we're, that whole voyage of connecting to the earth and connecting to these people who can make change, we're working just as hard on those partners and those platforms as we are in getting Hokulea ready to go.
when you try to imagine and add up how much goodness people are actually doing as individuals, not collected, not organized, not institutionalized, we should never do that. Just let that wave happen, let that movement happen. We're in the race between those who are essentially hurting the earth and those who are healing it. What we're trying to do is reclaim our relationship to the earth. It's our time to turn the canoe to the only island we have, and that's the Earth.